All right, so today I want to give you an update on my triple recessive ball python project that I started a few years ago. And let me tell you, when it comes to triple recessives, it can take a really long time and it can be extremely frustrating. As a matter of fact, I actually went over to the world of ball pythons. They have a genetic calculator over there and I actually plugged in two triple hats, read them together in the calculator and sat down and kind of did some calculations, figured out that you'd actually have to breed those snakes over and over for about 13 years to produce a triple visual with all three recessive genes in a ball python. As a matter of fact, the, the recessive genes, you actually need two copies of the gene for a visual. So essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to make a six gene animal with three recessives in one ball python. That's why it's a little bit tricky. And what I actually did a few years ago, three years ago, I actually took an albino pied male, both the albino and the pied are recessive, and I bred it to a clown female. The clown's recessive too. And what, essentially what I ended up with is a whole clutch of normal looking ball pythons. They were all triple heads. Head for albino, head for pied, and head for clown. And it's been, as a matter of fact, it's been about two years since those hatched out, and they're getting really close to breeding size. I want to show you them today. They're pretty close. I'd say they're about 13, 1400 grams maybe. I think I'm going to wait one more year before I start breeding those together. And I also wanted to give you an update as far as what I did this year. So this year what I did is I took my albino pied male, I bred it to my lesser clown female, and I produced some lesser triple heads. So I have triple heads with one more gene in the mix. I'm actually going to try to do some uh, kind of the long-term goal on this is I want to produce the triple visual with the lesser gene in there. So it'll be lesser, albino, pied, and clown. Essentially a seven gene animal, which is pretty crazy. And then as far as kind of the long term, you know, kind of the lifetime project that would pretty much take, uh, you know, like 80 plus years, which is kind of crazy. I want to take that triple visual with the lesser, if I can actually hit it in a male, and then breed that to something like uh, another recessive. I'm thinking maybe like a monsoon or something like that to kind of mix it up and make things really interesting and then I would actually produce quadruple heads and let me tell you breeding two quadruple heads together the odds are pretty slim as far as hitting a, a like a quadruple recessive visual in one ball python which is kind of crazy you're kind of going down a rabbit hole that a lot of people I'd say a lot of people don't go down the multiple recessives because you're going down a really deep rabbit hole trying to get to the bottom of it and I want to show you a few ways to kind of speed things up in this video and I want to show you all the snakes, the parents that actually produced my triple hats, and I want to show you some of these lesser triple hats have a kind of an interesting look. The triple head kind of changes the lesser pattern where it kind of scrambles it up a little and makes it look a little bit different. So I'm just going to start pulling some snakes and I want to show you kind of this crazy rabbit hole project that I've been working on for the last few years. All right, so take a look at this beauty. This is my albino pied male. His name is Skipper. I bought him back in 2016 as a hatchling, which is kind of crazy. I guess that makes him uh, five years old now, which is pretty amazing. Pretty good size for a male, for a five-year-old male. He's been pretty productive. So this is the one, that this is the male that I bred to that clown to produce my triple heads. And this is the one I bred to my lesser clown to produce those triple heads. This year I actually bred him to an albino, 100% head pied and produced three more of these beautiful high white albino pieds, which is pretty awesome. As a matter of fact, I haven't figured out the males and the females, but if I produce a female or two, I may actually hold them back as future breeders. But this is, the, the thing about this is this is a double recessive. So if you breed this to any other snake, you'll get normal looking snakes. You won't see the albino or the pied in those snakes unless they actually contain one copy of either gene. So the pied brings in the big splotches of white, the albino brings in the yellow, and then the albino gives them the red eyes too. You'll see in this guy, he has really super bright red eyes, which is pretty cool. Pretty awesome. Look at this. He has a really cool head stamp, really cool pattern on the top of his head. He's a really awesome looking snake. All right, let me show you the clown that I bred to produce those triple hats. All right, so take a look at this big old girl. This girl's name is Bambi. Bambi is a clown. Just one single recessive gene, no other genes in here. So she's got two copies 
of the clown gene. And the clown essentially what it does is it kind of jumbles up the, the pattern. And clown, let me tell you, if you actually look at just a clown by itself, it's kind of deceiving because you look at a clown and a lot of people just go crazy over the clowns. And you're like, well, if you just look at like a straight clown, it doesn't really look that impressive as far as you know people going insane like like bonkers over the clown it's like why does everybody want a clown and it's because when you mix other genes with the clown you get the most amazing combination it makes probably the best combinations out of any other gene especially if you work in like pastel just some of the basic genes you mix it in with clown and you make some really amazing combinations so it has a lot of potential working in with other genes you know you look at the clowns and a lot of people aren't really that impressed until you see some of the amazing mind-blowing combinations when you work other genes in with the clown. So I actually produced those triple heads breeding that albino pie to this clown. I want to show you those triple heads next. Those are pretty amazing. All right, so take a look at this girl. This girl's name is Lucky, and she is a triple head female. Head for albino, head for pied, and head for clown. Look at how big she's getting. Pretty big. And kind of the frustrating thing is that about one year old, she got up to about 900 grams. All these triple heads got up to about 900 grams, and they all went off of food. I actually have one male and two females that I held back from that original clutch. And kind of the weird thing is when they were younger, it seemed like they were a lot brighter. You know, sometimes they head clown can really brighten things up and as they age to mature they pretty much just look like like a like a normal like like a regular normal <laughs> as a matter of fact if I handed you this thing you would not know that this is a triple head that's kind of one of the challenges of working on multiple heads and the other weird thing is if you actually take a look at her belly usually with uh, head pods I'd say about you know like 25% you'll actually see really strong tracks on the belly you really can't see uh, like definitive tracks along the belly and this one looks like pretty much like a normal bull python from top to bottom which is kind of crazy but let me tell you if you actually bred two of these together you would end up with albinos albino pieds albino clowns you'd end up with pieds and clowns and a whole bunch like a whole rainbow of different really awesome snakes breeding two triple heads together so what I want to show you next is I want to show you my lesser clown female that produced some of my lesser triple heads all right, so take a look at this one. This girl's name is Cuddles. Yes, I name all my snakes. And look at Cuddles, how big she is. She's a monster. I actually paid, back when I bought this one, I think I paid like $950 for a lesser clown back in the day. She's, uh, as a matter of fact, she is from 2017. So she is four years old, pretty big for four years old. And she, it, it's kind of weird. She kind of flips where she'll eat like crazy and just eat everything you give to her. And then she'll go on these really long fasts where she won't eat at all. <laughs> it's, just, it's just kind of maddening. She goes back and forth. She's back on food now. So she's looking a little bit better after the breeding season. As a matter of fact, we're coming up to the breeding season here in about a month. I have to start figuring out what to pair next. But kind of the interesting thing with the lesser and the clown as a hatchling, they look absolutely stunning. And as they age and mature, you lose all the contrast and it just kind of kind of muddies the water on this specific clown combination. As hatchlings, they look really fantastic. Still looks like a really good snake, but nothing like it looked when I was a hatchling, let me tell you. So what I did this year, I actually took my albino pied, crossed it to this girl, and I ended up with some lesser triple hats. So let me show you what those lesser triple hats look like. All right, so I want to show you a couple snakes here. The first one I want to show you is this one right here. This is just a lesser ball python. And I produce just some straight lessers, just a single gene lesser. This one happens to be possible head desert ghost. And there's really no markers for head desert ghost that you can see in a lesser. Pretty much just looks like a regular lesser. They start out really bright like this. They fade a little bit, but they keep a lot of the brightness and the color. The lesser is actually in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. So if you breed two lessers together, 25% uh, of the time you'll end up with an all-white snake with blue eyes, a blue-eyed leucistic. And if you actually take the lesser, work it into the triple head, this is what you get. This is the lesser head albino, head pied, and head clown. I actually produced 
five of these. Kind of the weird thing is, uh, the, as far as the kind of the odds on that clutch, I should have had half lessers and half non-lessers, and every single snake in the whole clutch was a lesser triple hat. What are the odds of that? All five hatchlings were actually exactly like this. And uh, the kind of the weird thing is all these lesser triple hats were really striped right down the top. This is probably the least striped ones. Most of them had a really strong stripe right down the top. And you can see a lot of blushing up on the side. Look at that crazy pattern on the side from the triple head, which is pretty wild. So a lot of times your your head pides will actually scramble up the pattern. So I'm thinking a lot of the scrambled up patterns probably coming from the head pied. A lot of the brightness is probably coming from the head clown. Now it seems like all my head clowns this year are a lot brighter than all the regular snakes that I produce that are not head for clowns. So it's kind of an interesting difference between a lesser and then the lesser triple head which is pretty wild. So what I want to do is I want to jump over to the internet and I want to show you some genetic calculators as far as the odds on producing some of these crazy combinations. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on the internet and I want to go back and forth between two different websites, the World of Ball Pythons and Morph Market. And both of them have genetic calculators where you can plug in the genes for the male and the female ball python. And what it'll actually do is it'll give you the probability of the different combination of genes showing up in your offspring, which is pretty powerful. And kind of the interesting thing about the two different genetic calculators, they'll actually give you the same results, but they present the results in slightly different ways to where I like to, as a matter of fact, if I'm using the genetic calculators, I like to jump back and forth between the two to kind of see the differences in the two calculators. So I'm actually going to start over here on the world of ball pythons, the genetic wizard. And essentially how this works is over here where the male is, you actually just click over here and you can choose your gene and then just type in the genes. So over here on the left, I put in the albino and the pied. Over here for the female, I put in the clown, I hit calculate. And down here on the bottom, this is my first pairing that I paired up three years ago. I got 100% triple heads. Had albino, had pied, and had clown. Pretty much normal looking snakes. So kind of the next step is you actually come back over here on the genetic wizard, and then you plug in your triple heads for the male and the female. So this is the pairing that I'm going to do next year, assuming my females will be big enough. I'm pretty sure they will be. So I'm going to take my head albino, head clown, head pied male, breed it to the triple head female. You hit calculate and look at all the results. You get down here, it's just kind of mind boggling all the different results that you actually get down here. Way down on the bottom, 1.5625% uh, of the time, you'll actually get the triple visual, the albino, clown, pied, where you get all three genes as a visual in a ball python. If you actually look at the odds, it's one in 64. So if you actually kind of break that down, when you first start breeding a ball python, I'd say on average, you usually start out with about six eggs per clutch and you get one clutch of eggs per year. So you're looking at 10 years, uh, 10 or 11 years to produce your first visual. And then keep in mind, you're actually spending at least two or three years to grow that female up to size before you can start breeding it for the very first time. So you're looking at 13 or 14 years with just two triple heads breeding to get together, which is kind of crazy. So take a look at this. This is actually over here on Morph Market, the same exact calculator where I can plug in my two triple heads, my head albino, head pied, head clowns, breathe the two together, and look at the difference in the results as far as what you get over here. So instead of giving you all the, the individual results for all the hats, it'll give you the possible hats and kind of group them all together. And kind of the powerful part about this is it'll actually put all the visuals over here, you'll actually see them all in this kind of a pink color over here. We get albinos, you get clowns, you'll get albino clowns, you'll get the albino pie clowns, and then all the way on the bottom, you'll get normal looking snakes. It'll actually group all the normal looking snakes together. 42% of the time, you'll get a normal looking snake breeding those two triple heads together. So four out of 10 eggs are going to be normal looking snakes. And the kind of the confusing part is there's normal snakes are going to be, uh, they can either be normals with no heads at all. It could be head for albino, head for clown. It could be head for albino and clown. <laughs> it could be all the different combinations of the heads. And that's why they kind of group them together and give you a 66% head 
for each one. That's kind of the odds of getting each head. So, you know, it's, it's not too bad, you know, if you're actually looking at all the different combinations you can get, and then the 42%. So take a look at this. This is kind of the next step that I took. I actually put lesser into the combination. So if you put lesser into the triple head and you breed it to another triple head, one thing you have to remember is you don't want to breed a lesser triple head to another lesser triple head because 25% of the time you'll actually end up with the white snake, the blue-eyed leucistic, the all-white snake with the blue eyes, and that will completely mask all the other genes in the ball python. So you definitely don't want to do that or you'll end up with, you, know, you, you could potentially get your triple visual and if you hit the white snake too, it would completely mask the triple visual, which would completely destroy you. So you have to kind of watch what you're breeding together. And then keep in mind the lesser is also in the blue-eyed leucistic. So you don't want to breed it with any other gene in the blue-eyed leucistic. So you don't want to add like Russo or Mojave or lesser, mocha, bamboo. You don't want to add bamboo to the mix because if you get end up with a bamboo lesser you're going to end up with an all white snake so if you actually bred these two together take a look at this you hit calculate and you come all the way down here so essentially what it, what it is is you get the lesser triple head it's kind of interesting and it has a picture here of a lesser triple head well as a matter of fact if you actually just look at the genes this is just a picture of a lesser as a matter of fact i might upload my lesser triple head over here and <laughs> start putting some pictures over here on the world of ball pythons that aren't actually here but if you look at the results one in 128 you'll get a normal ball python which is uh, kind of wild that you'll actually get a normal. If you look all the way at the bottom, one in 128 that you will get the lesser triple visual, which is probably going to take you, I'd say, 23 years <laughs> of breeding two snakes together to get the lesser triple visual, which is kind of crazy. So take a look at this. This is this is kind of the next step that the really essentially this is where I want to be eventually once I actually hit that triple visual. So if you actually hit the albino clown pied, you can actually take that assuming it's a male, then you can read it back to all your females, which would be really powerful. So so take a look at this. The odds completely change if you take your triple visual male, read it to your triple head females that are already up to size. And this is what you actually get. Take a look at this. One out of eight, you'll actually hit another triple visual, which is pretty awesome. And then you'll actually hit uh, the triple hats, the pied uh, double hats. So, so kind of in this case, you won't have the percentages of the head. Every single time you breed it, you'll know 100% sure, you'll be sure that you'll actually have 100% head for that gene and your odds really kind of pare down to where you get all this kind of rainbow of colors of all these different snakes and one out of eight pretty much one out of every clutch you'll actually hit the triple visual and you can actually go one step further so take a look at this if you actually took of course if you took the triple visual, bred it to a triple visual, the albino pied clowns, you breed two of them together, 100% you get a whole clutch of albino pied clowns at that point. That's kind of the, the ultimate, uh, kind of the ultimate goal of this project. So here's where it gets really confusing. So take a look at this. You can actually take, uh, if you if you took like a triple visual and you bred it to another a uh, recessive gene, you end up with quadruple heads. <laughs> I tell you, you're kind of going down a really deep rabbit hole dealing with quadruple heads. And essentially what you end up with, head albino, head clown, head pied, and then head for whatever else that you want to add. In this case, I just put het monsoon because it'd be kind of interesting to throw like a, like a monsoon. Monsoon's a really kind of the newer gene and they're really super expensive right now. So hopefully once I actually hit my triple visual and start thinking about what's next gene, maybe the prices for the monsoons in like 10 years will actually come down to where they're pretty reasonable. So take a look at this. If you actually bred two quadruple hats together, take a look at what your odds are. You get all this stuff just on and on going down the rabbit hole of all this stuff that you produce and look at way down at the bottom 
one in 256 odds that you'd actually hit the albino clown monsoon pie, which is insane. So take a look at this. If you actually pull up your calculator here and do uh, 256 and say on average, if you got like six eggs per clutch, you're looking at almost 43 years. And then you add in another three years for those females to mature. You're looking at 46 years on this project, which is crazy. So take a look at this. If you actually took those quadruple hats and you added the lesser gene on top of it, which I'm trying to do, it gets even further. So take a look at this. You're actually going way, way down the rabbit hole on this one, way, way down, trying to produce a lesser quadruple visual recessive. The odds are 1 in 512. So let me, let me take a look at this. You're looking at 512, say, divided by 6. You're looking at 85 years to produce this combination, which is insane. <laughs> it's really insane. All right, so I actually did uh, uh, another calculation. This is kind of interesting, too. So if you actually did hit the quadruple visual and you bred it back to a quadruple hat, take a look at this. The odds really pare down 1 in 16 that you'd actually produce another quadruple visual. So once in every two clutches, you'd actually produce it. And then of course, if you actually had two of them, you could actually produce a whole clutch. But essentially what I would like to do is I'd like to get to this point where I'm producing a whole rainbow of different colors, breeding a quadruple visual to a quadruple head. Because you know, if you're breeding a, a, like the albino clown monsoon pied, if you breed two of them together, sure you get a whole clutch of all the same thing, it's really powerful but in this you get a whole rainbow of different things and you know a hundred percent that you have all these hats in there too so this is pretty much where I stop as far as breeding stuff together as you know quadruple it and kind of the, the challenging thing about this is there's a lot of people breeding multiple recessives together and most people aren't choosing the same genes so you see a lot of quadruple well I don't think you see any quadruples <laughs> you see some people going for like double recessives every now and then you'll see for like a triple recessive it's pretty rare but not many people are going for the same triple recessives as I am like I'm doing the you know albino pied clown I've seen people doing like albino pied like uh, genetic stripe or something like that completely different genes in their triple heads and if you actually want to pair this down kind of my plan is to produce more female triple heads so the more females you have you can really pare it down so for example if you actually had say like a 40 year time frame it takes you 40 years to produce the visual which is a really long time like on one of these quadruple heads you could actually pare it down by making 10 females if you had 10 females you could reduce that to four years instead of 40 years so that's the power of having multiple females and right now I actually have four females so it reduces all the times by a factor of four which is pretty powerful so that's kind of the whole rabbit hole project I'm going down hopefully you learned something if let me tell you if you go down this road it can be a really long time to actually hit some of these combinations but it's kind of fun to try to do it I probably wouldn't base a whole collection around this I'd probably kind of do it on the side with just a few snakes and keep most of your I'd probably kind of focus on most of the stuff doing like dominant or co-dominant genes in your collection. So that's pretty much it. I hope you learned something. I hope you came along for the ride and got kind of, kind of my insight as far as going down this crazy rabbit hole. So thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.